I'm Dr. Barry, licensed psychologist, and I'm going to talk about my phenomenal experience being a part of the Harvard Creator Mental Health Summit. Now, this all started back in March when I received this email. So it said, congratulations that I was going to be a part of this program, uh, the inaugural Harvard Chan Creators Summit on Mental Health. And so the email went on to say, you're a part of a truly inspiring and innovative group of mental health creators. I'm going to show you some individuals from my cohort. And that it was, so it started out with a virtual summit and then later had an in-person portion. And the virtual portion, so it was, I think it was the month of April. A few times a month, we would have online sessions where we talked with different professors. I'm going to share to show you some of the topics that we covered. And, but let me go back to just getting the email and at first thinking that this was spam. <laughs> so I get so many spam emails due to being a creator where people are like, I don't know, like, I get I get a lot of spam stuff. So I did not think this was true until I looked at the email address and it was truly from an at Harvard EDU email address. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is really legit. <laughs> and I completed the process immediately, said that I was willing to co-host one of the panels. And I was, I did get that opportunity, which was super cool. And I'll definitely talk about that as well. But this whole experience was just very surreal because first of all, just being invited. So I am one of many mental health creators and I try my best to provide accurate information and really just to be honored like this in this way, it really did help motivate me to continue going. And because um, being a content creator, you can kind of burn out easily where things can get frustrating. You can kind of think, you know, am I having an impact? What is happening? And during this process, especially the in portion, the in-person portion, I really learned more about how people view me as a mental health creator. And the cool thing about the program is that some people in the program, they were, they had lived experience and some of us were licensed professionals. So there were individuals that educate on social emotional learning, that educate on women's mental health. And there's one individual, Kate, who has a therapy dog. And so she has an account for herself and also for her dog and just talking about that process and her difficulty going through the mental health system and trying to really advocate for others. And the in-person part, I really connected more with the creators, the online portion, because we were all just kind of like, what? <laughs> One of my friends that I will get to later, a sassy Black social worker, Kalita, she asked the question we were all thinking of, what did y'all pick us? Like, like why us? And at the in-person portion, we learned that we were a part of a study that they're doing on just our content versus creators that weren't in the program. And just looking at, are we providing accurate information and would the things that we learned in the program would it impact our content in any way. And honestly, I kind of burned out on TikTok a little bit. So all the creators in the program, they looked, they looked, they knew that we had other platforms, but they were really looking for us over on TikTok. And since my YouTube got monetized, I've been doing more on YouTube, but I still do things over, over on TikTok. I have a phenomenal community there. When I get ideas to just do short videos, sometimes some of my YouTube shorts come from over there or, and some of the YouTube shorts are like old TikToks. I, I just, that was really the first platform that I had that blew up rather quickly for me. So some of the creators had millions of followers. Some of us had, you know, you know, 20 to a hundred thousand. So there was a variety in the size of creators. And here I'm going to go through some of the things that we learned about. And so one of our first sessions was on connecting people to the help they need, really talking about the difficulty people have 
Finding Adequate Mental Health Services. And it was hosted by Dr. Sasha. And over on Instagram, she's the Psych Doctor MD. Phenomenal content. She has ADHD and is just really honest about her experience as a psychiatrist and growing up and just a lot of different things. Like she's a She's she was so cool in person. So like if you love her online, I was really honored to get to meet and connect with her in person. Then we talked about how trauma spans generations and really talking about intergenerational trauma. This was very impactful and a great session and um, just getting to learn from different Harvard professors. And they did the material in a way that everyone could gain something, the licensed professionals and then also the individuals that maybe don't have as much education in psychology, but that are very passionate about it, that we could all take pieces back to our communities. And this was led by Recollected Self. She has a book. Oh, I have it right. I'm going to grab it. She has a book coming out, Toxic Relationship Recovery. I did a forward. I think I should be in the front somewhere or somewhere. I'm in here. I, I endorsed the book and I'm just really excited for her. I hope to have her on the channel to get to interview her. People get busy, so I don't know if it'll happen, but that was something that, and it was cool to get because we had never talked in person. We had never met. And so I was able to meet her in person. The next one was a mother's mental health struggles are not just her own. And that was a very interesting conversation. We also talked about Black maternal mental health and just some of the experiences that marginalized groups can have within the healthcare system. And it was, it was a really phenomenal learning experience. Uh, we also talked about the science behind the mind-body link. Um, that was a great session um, show. He actually, I believe he was, he was out of country. I forget exactly where he was, um, but he was international and um, he wasn't able to make it for the in-person portion. So I wasn't able to connect with him in person. Uh, mental health is physical health. This is something that I scream from the platforms because there are health insurance companies that offer health insurance that does not cover mental health. But mental health has a significant impact on your physical health and physical health can impact your mental health and addressing one without the other can create a lot of problems. And we got to hear from Harvard professors that study public mental health. We got to learn about these things and like it was truly an honor to be a part of this whole process. So this was the one that I did, the coercive effect of bias and discrimination. We talked about body size discrimination, hair discrimination, and then also just how social media can impact those things with Dr. Bryn Austin. She was phenomenal. I was also able to interview her for the in-person portion and dig a little deeper. And then also, um, cause her, the topic of hers was the real cost of beauty ideals. And then I was able to interview Dr. David Williams. He is one of the premier, um, like he is, I think one of the most cited African-American sociologists, like, like I think, and he's, he's just been cited in a bunch of research. He just, it was great to also talk with him in person, but even interviewing him over Zoom, just very personable. And I really just learned so much from those conversations. I think one of the biggest takeaways was that a huge protective factor for kids that have experienced bias and discrimination is having support, having friends, having support of their family, having support of their teachers, that those things can actually mitigate or buffer against the effects of racial discrimination. Uh, and my friend Kalita Sassy Delta over on um, the Sassy Social Worker, she changed it from that one. Sassy so Social Worker, she talked about that over on her TikTok. Um, she shared a great clip. Um, and I think we'll cover that when we meet live on Sunday at 2 p.m. So this Sunday... August 20th, we'll meet online to talk about student mental health and bullying. And this talk that we did was how racism undermines both mental and physical health. And that was just a great learning experience, just talking about how 
kids who experience racism and don't have those buffers, they can have higher physical concerns, higher levels of cortisol, higher levels, higher BMI, higher high blood pressure, and just all of these different things not only impact their mental health, but also their physical health as well. And we also learned the truth behind climate grief. And um, just talking about how climate change and mental health, the impact that that can have. Um, I wasn't able to meet this creator. Um, uh, he didn't come for the in-person portion, um, but he did a phenomenal job leading that conversation. Climate action must include mental health. And that was the second part of that panel discussion. And then this last one was led by Victoria. Um, I also, yes, I don't, yes, she was not at the in-person portion. I am horrible with names, but uh, when visual, when visuals distort, addressing visual misinformation and mental health, that was a, that because we talked about AI and just how the impact of, of AI or just how um, all of these different mediums, how misinformation can have an impact on on health and it reminded me of eat baby i think that was his screen name that he checked himself into a mental health um facility after watching a documentary that now the the person that did the documentary has come out and said that there weren't supposed to be any like q anon references or anything but um because in talking about eat baby uh talking about his mental health some of that conspiracy stuff in the articles I read, some of that came up, but um, that misinformation can truly impact mental health. And let's see, an insider's guide to interpreting research. So this was phenomenal because we just got to talk about how do you break down research, how to communicate things in a way that's engaging and helpful and also accurate. <laughs> Looking at correlation versus like causation, that just because something correlates just because things are related doesn't mean that it caused it. So saying that, you know, stress can have an impact on, on certain things that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a direct cause and effect. Um, and I just made that up as, as a particular example, but, um, another session that we did was put into action, driving change in digital spaces. And I didn't get to meet Courtney in person, um, but I had, I've connected with her on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, I also enjoy her content as well. TikTok, a case study, five lessons for mental health content creators, because I think making sure that we're using these platforms in a way that is educational, but then also just making sure that information is accurate. And then we, we're supposed to have a brainstorming session. My brain, I can't remember if we did, <laughs> I can't remember if we did this. I don't know. It's all a blur because all of that was all within one month. <laughs> so we did all of these sessions in one month and it was a lot. Um, but then we had the invitation where it was all included. They paid for our travel and everything to come for an in-person summit. And here are some of the attendees. Now, I have put the links for this down because it actually has links to these individuals' social media. And so I was able to meet Nadia, phenomenal person. She's on TikTok, IG, YouTube, and also has a podcast. Um, there I am. It was so weird. So all day, these would just flash. So at Harvard, in one of the main buildings are where, where we had a lot of our sessions and everything, our pictures would just post all day long. And I think about a minute a piece. And with our little bio, it was just, it was so uh, surreal to be there. I had never been to Boston before. I also hadn't, you know, been on Harvard's campus. And uh, we were at the Boston campus, not the Cambridge campus. Everything went by so fast because uh, if I had had extra day, I probably would have just went by the Cambridge campus, but it is what it is. I so enjoy myself. And then my TikTok, IG, and YouTube are linked. And then Divya. Oh, it's phenomenal. She is in India and she is a content creator. I believe her tag is like awkward girl. I, yes. 
awkward goat. <laughs> Uh, three, but she just creates phenomenal content. And through the process, I was able to connect with some other creators before the in-person part. And then any of the ones that I hadn't connected with before, afterwards, I was able to connect with them. And it was just, it was, it was a surreal experience. She talks a lot and is a big advocate for mental health in, in India because they don't have the same credentialing processes. Like she talks about that anybody can call themselves a psychologist there. And so the field isn't recognized or it's not as like, there might be some people that are doing things they shouldn't do. <laughs> and so like she tries to advocate for change and then also that people find you know, helpful care. And I believe she runs a clinic out there, but yeah. Um, Victoria talks about the different things that, that she shares. Kobe, Kobe is phenomenal. I had not connected with her before the summit, but uh, since I have, she practices down in North Carolina and has a clinic down there. But she shares phenomenal information on, on social media, specifically talking about uh, women's mental health, Black women's mental health. And just just truly appreciate getting to to connect with her. Samantha, yes, she is one of the creators that talk about their own lived experience. And she really focuses on empowering women and um, just shares really inspirational content. Lauren Cook. Um, so I think some of these people were listed, but I think some people didn't didn't come. I think this might be all the creators unless my brain forgets, <laughs> which is possible. <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay is, a, is adorable and phenomenal. Lindsay, uh, I had connected with her on social media before, but she is a large creator with like a small creator's heart. Like there was, like she was just so warm, just she tells the best stories. I told her I love her, the way that she tells stories. And a lot of things that we were able to talk and just connect with outside of the summit, it was just, it was really cool to get to, to, to do that there. Um, I will share some pictures. Dr. Sasha, I talked about her earlier. She's a board certified psychiatrist. Um, absolutely phenomenal. She, she's also coming out with a app for ADHD. Once any of these things release, um, I will definitely share any resources and tools with my community. Rachel talks a lot about her lived experience with, with mental health. And um, it was truly just like she's an authentic, just awesome human. And it was really great to, to connect with her. Uh, Kalita, this is my TikTok bestie. We have been TikTok besties, I want to say since 2020, maybe 2021, but um, I'll be bringing her on the channel to interview her this Sunday. She's a licensed social worker, and uh, she also uh, does some private practice work as well, specializing in healing trauma, and she's in Chicago. And so she sees a lot. She is at a school with over 4,000 students, which is, that's a very large school, especially in, in Chicago and just the different needs and different things that she, that she experiences and supports. Uh, she also talks a lot about being um, a mom to a gay son and just her advocating for LGBTQ rights. And um, like, she's just a phenomenal being. And yes, Evan, um, he did not come to the summit, but um, I have connected with him on TikTok. Jamie, yes, um, I mentioned her book earlier. Um, it was really cool to just get to, to connect with people in person. Yes. And so this was another creator that was in the program. Um, they were not able to make it for the in-person portion. Um, I mentioned that... Uh, that this creator led a summit and on one of on one of the pieces that was virtual. Um, Olivia was not able to make it in person. Haley and then Matthew. So I've connected with him on TikTok. Uh, I think I have a video on my channel that we where we talked about um, parenting and 
parenting with a toxic partner, because that's a lot of the content of his work. He is a coach and talks a lot about that experience. Sometimes he changes his his handle. So I don't know if it's still Matt Pfeiffer coaching, um, but it was it was awesome to connect with um, these awesome creators. Yes. Peter did not make it in person. Kim. Yes. Did. And so I've connected with her online. Kate was able, so I was able to meet Kate and also her dog waffle. And, um, I am allergic to dogs. Uh, but I so appreciate, so waffle is a therapy dog and, and he is her service dog and is able to predict, um, is able to smell the cortisol. So if she starts to get stressed, a uh, waffle is able to help her calm. I would like to have her on my channel to talk about service dogs versus emotional support animals and just what the public should know. And so like, please know collaborations with some of these creators will definitely be coming as long as all that works out. Um, but she, TikTok, Instagram, and also has a newsletter. Bryce, it was really cool to get to connect. He talks about his lived experience with mental health um, as a young child experiencing selective mutism and also social anxiety. And then, because I'll show you that he led a panel with some, it was a men's mental health panel and he did a phenomenal job. And so it was just really cool to get to connect with these creators. James Taylor Jr. So I knew James before the summit. <laughs> so we actually knew each other pre 2023 versions of one another back in 2007. Cause I was in graduate school. Cause I, we were members of the same church and worked together. And, um, at, at that church, he was the youth minister, I believe. And I was just, uh, you know, I was someone that was supporting the, the staff there and, um, just to see his name be like, oh my gosh. And cause we had not talked in years. And so it was really good to get to, to reconnect. Um, he talks about men's, um, social emotional learning and just his own journey, um, learning that, uh, coming out of some toxic things that that he had just based on childhood, just based on some of his own lived experience and just his own journey with therapy. And he offers a men's conference uh, once a year where um, it just sounds like, like they do a great job um, educating individuals. Courtney, Courtney is phenomenal. I was able to connect with her. Did that happen again? With the, Yes. <laughs> you all know I so Courtney is a is another phenomenal creator. Um, she was not able to make it in person, but um, and then Trey. Trey did make it in person. I was able to connect with him. Uh, he talked about his transition from corporate to mental health and just that journey. And um, and he has uh, TikTok and Instagram. So those were the different creators that were a part of the summit. Let's talk a little bit about the journey there. So we stayed at the Residence Inn, uh, Fenway, the, that Marriott, and we, there was actually a Fall Out Boys concert that was right across, you know, that was at Fenway Park. And we were able to hear and see some of the fire and see some of the fireworks from the show. Uh, from the rooftop bar. It was super cool. It was, it was great. And also great that it was all included. <laughs> um, they really supported us. Uh, when, when we went Boston, they were doing a lot of construction. So it took forever <laughs> to get from the airport to the, the location, but, um, we truly had a great time. I will share that I was able to connect with my friend, Kalita, she is a sassy black social worker over on Instagram and also TikTok. And I will also share because she recorded us meeting and it was super, super sweet. Uh, and because I shared on another live that I did that as was at the very end of that video, that when we met, because she recorded portions of it and she asked me to do it again. And I was just like, because I'm, 
I'm a psychologist that happens to create content. I am not a content creator. I do not get things perfect. I do not say things perfectly. I am human and I want to authentically be me. And it was Emily D. Baker that was talking about some, it was a cohort of creators that had branched off and they were suing each other. And just that with the relationships that you create, if you're recording it, sometimes you can look back and think, was that because the camera was on? Is our relationship like, how do we interact with each other? What do we do when we're when we're not recording? And my relationship with her is so authentic. She is like a big sister that I was just like, I don't want to do it again. So I will show you that meeting. And so this was us meeting and it was so surreal. So my mom <laughs> went with me. That was super awesome. Uh, I paid for I have points. And so she came and then just getting to connect with these awesome creators. We went to a phenomenal uh, seafood place. I had a real lobster roll. I didn't know that was a thing, but like it was, I had never had one that was the hot dog shape and it was, everything was absolutely delicious. My mom had some of the soup and that was fresh. Um, this was us. So recollect itself. Nadia, Kalita, and Lindsay that we were up on that rooftop bar hanging out. Uh, I did a video of myself, like of us getting there um, and just being a part of these phenomenal creators. Um, and then my mom, so I bought some earrings. We went to a store. I didn't buy them. Sorry. She bought me some some amazing earrings. That was super cool. Our plane, we were delayed a little bit because that was the plane. But we, yes, we definitely were, were delayed. And then I have a few other videos and images up over on my IG. Before we talk about the rest of the experience, let me show you the merch. So I, when we got there... They had this awesome tote that was really cool. And then in the tote, we had our schedule. So we had this folder that had our schedule and some just some other information, nothing major. Um, I am a bit of a planner, so I had already printed the schedule because I'm I I like to plan and all of those things. And so um, then there was also, ooh, so the light is kind of reflecting weird, but you can kind of see there was this. And then on the back, it says creator mental health summit. This is really cool. And then we had a free shirt. Uh oh, upside down. I love free. So I had wanted a Harvard shirt. Super cool that they provided that. I did buy my son a little. So I left on my son's birthday. <laughs> so the start of the summit, um, our travel day was my son's birthday. That morning, because we didn't fly out until closer to 2 p.m. So that morning, my mom and I took him out to Chick-fil-A. We had celebrated his birthday that Saturday because we left on Tuesday. So that Saturday before... My in-laws came up. We had cupcakes. So we sell it. And he opened all his gifts. We celebrated his birthday then. Mommy also had a package arrive. So I was gone Tuesday. No, was it Wednesday? Mm, the second. Wednesday. Yes, I was gone Wednesday through Friday. And so on Thursday, a package arrived that had a few items that he didn't receive from his wish list for his birthday. And I also picked him up this little dragon. There is a Harvard, like a little handkerchief thing, or I don't know what you call it, but there was something that was here. He immediately took it off <laughs> and it's, it's around here somewhere. I was going to make sure to keep it safe. I obviously did not keep it safe enough because I have no clue where it is, but it said like Harvard dental school, but it was, it was a dragon. They had different animals. His favorite was, was the dragon. And so that was for him. So for the, we, they gave us these little notebooks and there's also a pen with it that's in here somewhere where I was able to take notes throughout the whole summit. And 
we shared our magic moments. Kobe has a book, Why Am I Like This? Um, and ah, James Taylor, his conference or his book? Yes. Uh-oh. We as men, beautiful struggle. Mm, I forget that was his book. Don't get me. I'll have to look for that information. <laughs> have you looked back at your notes and been like, what was I thinking? I have no clue. I have no clue. All right. And then, so I did. I just wrote down different notes and it was super fun. I tried to look for a Harvard sweatshirt. So we were at the public, the Harvard Chan School of Public Health. Um, they didn't have, it wasn't the main campus, so they didn't have main campus merch. So I went to Amazon. <laughs> Is this an official one? Probably not, but I got it and I like it and me being happy. That's all that matters. So I picked this up and cause I was like, I have to have a sweatshirt now. Now, did I go to Harvard? No, I still rep Virginia tech. I'm still a hokey through and through. This just expanded like, oh, I also have this other connection. And then I will encourage my child to look at HBCUs if he wants, but it's all a thing. So let's get to that article that talks about the experience. I have a link to this article down in the description. Social media influencers, faculty connect to improve mental health content. And there I am right over in the red and black right there. You can see me right there. And so this was at the beginning of the summit, Rebecca Robbins talked about how we can share our story in a way that is engaging. And so in the article, they start out with a quote from my TikTok bestie, Kalita, talking about not imagining why Harvard would reach out because we all felt like, is this real? It was. And we got together and learned about all this great information. Amanda, she's the director of this program. When She talked about the fact that we're never going to be able to reach everyone who needs mental health care one-on-one. -on -one. And this information, the fact that mental health creators, that we can reach a greater audience and wanting to partner with Harvard in a way where they could show us how to do it more effectively because they've, they've studied it. They've researched it. They know. They know messaging that works. They know things that don't work. They know. So after going to this, I made sure that when I share an article on a mental health topic, I try to include references. Or if somebody ever wants references, please just, just let me know. On shorts, they're not letting you do clickable links anymore. So I'll have to navigate how to manage it for shorts. But I might just take a clip or be able to share the link of how I searched for the for the research to find the particular article that I'm that I'm talking about. Because I think it's good for the public to be able to know, okay, I think I want to dig deeper into this. What exactly did that say? Because often I'm just sharing a portion. I'm not going to share everything. And she went on to say, we're going to learn to protect and promote mental health across large populations. And there's Samantha, um, but and talking about how that this whole process just has transformed our content, I can't say that more. I think one of my biggest take takeaways was that my audience views me as a friend because I was thinking that my audience saw me as a professional. I'm like, I'm Dr. Patrice Berry, like I'm a psychologist. But that's why there are people in my community that come to me and they say, how can I let my therapist know that it bothers me when they interrupt me? Or what are some ways I can communicate this, that, that they're coming? And I, and I don't give individual advice. I talk, I talk about in general, these are because, and if your therapist responds negatively, then like that might be a red flag that, um, cause I want to be protective of the fact that I don't know this individual. I don't know their situation. I can't give them individualized advice but I can just in general, just talk about these are some things that might help an individual in a similar circumstance and really just helping direct people back to resources and tools. There was a lady from the New York Times. We will see if any articles are released there. I will definitely share if anything comes out um, on any other platforms, but 
y'all can take a look at the rest of that link. One of my absolute favorite panels, which was led by Bryce, was on men's mental health. And they had the director of behavioral health for Boston. Um, that's the African-American psychiatrist. He is to the left of Bryce. And then they also had the, I think, co-owner of the Indianapolis Colts and um, Kaylin Jackson. And then they also had Dr. Bryce Spencer Jones. Um, wait a minute. I think I went the wrong way. Nope. <laughs> I said the wrong thing. It was Dr. Martin Pierre. Uh, he's the one on the other side, on the, on the far end. And he is a psychologist and talks a lot about Black mental health, especially for Black men. And just talking about how men suffer in silence and ways that we can help get them unstuck and the importance of telling stories because um, Kaylin Jackson talked about some of the initiatives that her foundation has and just how different cults organization members, it's called Kicking the Stigma, how I think they started with um, linebacker Darius uh, Shaquille Leonard and then other individuals have shared their, their stories as well. And they have a clip to the Kicking the Stigma campaign. And it really does make a difference when people hear stories of people who look like them, who have been in similar situations. Now, a pro football player is gonna have a different experience than like somebody else, but still just his experience as a black male, that, that there's gonna be some, some connections. There are gonna be some, cause often they look at football as a very masculine sport and we talk, and they talked about vulnerability and the importance of that. And I truly, once again, I gained so much from, from that panel. We also had a panel. Let me find the image with Carson Daly. It was super cool. And yes, I was able to get a picture with him, which was super cool. Uh, let me make that bigger. So that's me and Kalita. I hopped right into her picture <laughs> to be able to get a picture with him. Uh, I had I didn't know that he talked about having generalized anxiety and panic attacks and just how him sharing how people come up and they talk about their own anxiety and how him sharing his story, how that has been helpful for them. And they did a panel with Carson Daly. There's an individual from the Archerwald Foundation. And then y'all know I'm bad with names. Um, let me look it up. So James Holt with the Archerwald Foundation, that's Prince Harry's foundation. And he just talked about their mental health projects. And then Phil, I'm bad with names. Shermer? Mm -hmm. S-C-H-E-R-M-E-R. Project Healthy Minds. And that was Fireside Chat, how creators and media companies can drive real change. It was super cool conversation. Um, just hearing them share their experiences and just how sharing their story, how that has had an impact on, on, on individuals. And we were able to ask questions. And yeah, like I said, it was just because I was I forgot that Carson Daly was going to be there. <laughs> Cause like we were in the room. So like we are in the, not audience, but cause I think they streamed the first one. So the, and I'll link the YouTube video for that, for the men's conversation. Cause I have a link to that. I think I might've put it on the community tab. Please check the community tab if I don't have it in the show description, but um, it was, so they, they stream that one live and then this conversation, I think portions were recorded, but yeah, here were all of the creators. Like, so I am right up there just, and there are a few professors and a few other community members, not community, but some of the presenters, they came forward to just take the, the group picture this was the last day of the summit. So it was Thursday all day from like 8.30 in the morning until 7 p.m. at night. They fed us breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then Thursday, it was from 8.30 in the morning again until about 
3 p.m., but there were still interviews, there were still recordings, there were still things kind of happening. My flight was supposed to leave at 6 p.m., so I was trying to leave there by like right at you know three four o'clock to get to the airport. I of course uh, my flight was delayed. I was glad I still made it home because I had another family member. Their flight ended up getting canceled on a different day because of weather, and it was turned into a whole big thing. But um, I was able to still make it home, made it home a little bit later on the flight home. Do y'all believe in like coincidences and just, have you just had something random happen where it's like, what in the world? So I get on the flight and it's like 10 PM or I don't know, it's really late because we were supposed to leave at six by six 30 and then, but we're not leaving until like 10 o'clock. And which means I'm not going to be, maybe it was nine. I don't know. Don't get me. We end up leaving late. <laughs> Trust me. So I sit down. I'm in my um, extra comfort for the first time I upgraded to even more space. And um, so then a guy sits down, looks like a young kid. I thought he was like in high school or something. Turns out he just finished his freshman year in college. We end up chatting. I hear him on the phone with his dad talking about needing a charger. His phone, not his phone being like at 14%. Well, he still has to drive all the way home or go in an Uber or something. We have an hour and a half flight back to Virginia. And so I have an extra charger. Like I have a little portable I walk. And so I just, I was like, hey, you know, you can borrow it. Just make sure to give it back. Because <laughs> I know where you're sitting now. Uh, and so I let him borrow it and then we just end up chatting because I have on a Harvard shirt. So I have on that, that free Harvard shirt, super excited. And he just mentions, like, we just chat. He's like, oh yeah, I go to Virginia Tech. And he's like, what? <laughs> I just finished my first year at Virginia Tech. I, I graduated from Virginia Tech in 2004. And of course, I think the kid was born in like 2003. <laughs> But it's like, I work in Fredericksburg and the kid lives in Fredericksburg. Like it was just like, he's not a kid. He's a, he's a grown man. But like, it was just, it was really cool. Like sometimes these odd things. So when I'm, when my flight's delayed, there's nothing I can do. I'm thankful I'm still getting home. Uh, I went to Wahlburgers. Uh, let me share my picture. Because I used to watch the show. And so I went there and um, I recorded some B-roll. I'm not, I have to log in. I don't know. It's still a draft. I'll see if I post it or not. Because the burger wasn't that great. <laughs> like it wasn't, it was, and it was at the airport. So maybe the ones at the airport are, but I like, I like Five Guys better. Not sponsored. I get nothing for saying any of these things. I just, it was okay. The lobster roll, delicious. Wall burgers. Mm. It was, I'll probably won't go again. It was nice to see all the pictures on the wall. It was a really nice spot. I got to sit for a while, but yeah. That was my experience at the Creator Summit. I just, I planned, so I brought my webcam, my my mic, I brought a ring light, like I brought all of this stuff. I was so prepared to create content. And all I did was like a few vlogs. Like all I did was just a few, that was, that was all I did. I could have recorded the interviews that I did with the professors, but it, everything was just rushed and not in a bad way. Like, cause we were just on a time constraint to make sure that everybody could sit down and meet with the professors. But I just wanted to be there. And cause when the camera turns on, sometimes people change. And so I was able to just have these conversations and take a few notes. And, but if y'all have questions about any of these things, please, please, please let me know if you want to see more content about mental health. Oh, because I do want to share one last thing because I thought it was a really cool book and I'll probably do a whole video on it. And I'll make sure to add it to my Amazon store. It's not there yet. I will have a busy day today. I'm probably not going to do it today, but I will add it at some point behind their screens. 
It was a book and I was able to meet one of the authors, what teens are facing and adults are missing. And it's talking about how to help kids navigate a networked world. And these are, so Dr. Emily Weinstein, I believe she's a psychologist and I don't know what Carrie James, pretty sure she's a, so at Harvard, they don't use their, their doctor title. <laughs> like nobody does. And it's fine. Um, Cause often I think they're just trying to connect with people. I think knowing that this was written by like a psychologist to me, it gives it a little bit more like, but I think they're trying to reach more people. I don't know. But um, these two individuals got together and they also have a foundation. And let me find that. This is a brand new thing that was created, the Center for Digital Thriving. And the goal of this project is to help individuals learn to balance. So there are pros and cons of social media. There are pros and cons of living in a digital world. And so how do we help people thrive digitally. Because when we talk about social media having a negative impact on teen mental health, sometimes what people are missing is the, you know, role of algorithms or, or like, how do we teach people? Okay. So if you're going to be on social media, here are some tools. How do you protect your mental health? How do you do those things? And they're going to be researching and talking about these things. If I can bring one of these phenomenal people onto my channel. I definitely will. Yes. Emily Weinstein. She was the one I was able to meet. And then also Amber, I was able to meet her as well. Um, just phenomenal individuals. They were super passionate about these topics and about this information. And um, I wanted to share that book and cause I do think I'm going to do a whole video on it and then also sharing this piece as well. I do follow Cyber Farida on here. She, all her content is dedicated to helping parents navigate safety of their kids online. Like that is, she is a cybersecurity expert. She was rated in Forbes 30 under 30. And like, she just shares some really phenomenal things. I had her on my channel here. If you look at my channel, there should be a video with the two of us. It should be under live. I believe. But um, we did a video talking about mental health and um, social media, especially for kids and teens. I hope this was helpful. Like I enjoyed in going and I enjoy sharing these, these parts with you all. And there are some moments that will just be held private because they were sacred and they were just phenomenal. And truly getting to meet the creators in person and also the professors and just getting to learn more in person. So virtual was, but like in person, it was just took everything to a whole other level. I do hope, and I believe they are going to look at doing these types of things in the future. They might invite a second cohort. And then a lot of us asked to be brought back as, you know, mentors or as a part of the inaugural class to still be involved. And if I do have any projects, if I do have any collaboration collaborations or research opportunities that come available. I will definitely share those things here. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your day.